If you strip your subframe, you will be very sad. It doesn't say that in the instructions, it's just what you're told? I add the you'll be sad part, because oh. you will be sad. What's going on everyone? Todd and Alex from Plaid AF. In today's video, we're gonna be installing a rear sway bar from Unplugged Performance. Should be pretty straightforward, but we're gonna take you through on the video. And this is gonna be on a 2021 Model S Plaid. This is the one right here that we already have the Unplugged Performance Carbon Ceramic Brakes. This is the last install that we did. We've done some testing and we're here at Sticker Status, which is a shop here in town. Let's talk about that first. So Sticker Status does a couple things. Yep, Sticker Status is a Ceramic Pro Elite dealer. So ceramic coatings provide vehicle protection film, vehicle wraps and vehicle tint. Um, and uh, we accept Bitcoin here. Yeah, how cool is that? And what we're gonna do in a future video, we're gonna do ceramic coating on these wheels because there's a lot of dust that gets on the wheels yeah. and the ceramic coating help, helps that. Help keep them clean, help protect them and uh, make it much easier to wash them. Basically just hose them off and they stay clean. Brake dust is super, super dusty with these uh, really high performance brakes. So gotcha. important. Cool. And then second thing that we want to talk about before we get started is the shirt that Alex is wearing called Blue Help. Yep. So Blue Help is a law enforcement suicide prevention foundation. Year to date, 139 officers have committed suicide really difficult situation for those officers and their families. And what we do is we provide outreach to them and provide awareness to the, uh, the fact that this is going on and that there's a major, major epidemic in the police community as far as suicide. So visit the, uh, the link down below in the description, bluehealth.org. Your donations really help make a difference to that community. Thanks guys. Cool, awesome. All right, let's get into it. All right, we got this up. Preferably, we'd have a lift, but that lift situation still didn't come through, right? Right. <laughs> yeah, because trying to get anything off of a ship is like an impossible task at this point in life. So anyway, we did floor jacks, backup jack stands, not necessarily on a jack point, but as far as just a backup if the floor jack would fail for some reason. So Unplugged Performance makes this really easy for you guys. You go on the Unplugged Performance website, they're gonna list out the tools and the parts needed. There's a contents list. We have all these items right here as far as what they provide, as far as our tools go. We're over there on the shelf and in our other bin over there. So we're gonna start with step one, which is removing the under tray. And uh, I mean, guys, if you can read the English language and you can work with your hands, you can install this kit. Yeah, it should be pretty straightforward. Pretty straightforward. Cool, well, let's do it. by pushing the shield with flat pass pedal between the rear wheels upward into the car, sliding it towards the rear. The under shield will then come off together. So I guess where the sway bar sits, you just tuck it in there without actually seeing it. Let's see. The front of the wheel. Can you see a clip on your side? It's pointed to the, I need a flashlight, hang on. The flathead screwdriver. Wear safety glasses, guys. That's this one. What is it that fell out? Just, it was this plastic piece. It's this little guy right here is what you're looking for. Oh, it's, it's got one of those right there? Yeah. Oh, okay. It's just in the, it's, it's right behind the tire right there gotcha. and it'll drop right down. Oh, I see. So it fits yep. right to here. Yep. It's right here behind the tire. I see it. There it is. 
This is what's affecting my zero to 60 launches. All the weight of those leaves in there. Yeah, right? Jeez, you have a forest in there. Note, all the hardware will be reapplied. Do not throw anything away. Do not dispose of any clips. So the sway bar fits up under here, but it, but it doesn't say you need to take this off to get to it. It does not tell you anything about taking that off. No. Nope. No. Nope. Okay. Um, there are two OEM brackets that'll need to be removed. The bushing housing around the sway bar. It's got two black, it's a silver uh, brace with a black bushing inside of it. Yeah, uh, I think that's just a key piece of the instructions that they just left out is that you have to take this off because there's no way in hell you're getting to it without taking that off. You can't get to those bolts, to the 10 mils or to the 11 mils? Um, I mean, you just need to take those. There's only two, there's only yeah, four they, bolts. They sit like here. Oh, they're right behind it? Yeah, they sit, they sit like right here. This little, this little out pouch thing here is where, is where that bracket is. So there are two bolts right there. So don't know why it wouldn't just say to take this off. I mean, I guess you could stretch your arm under there with a wrench, but so One, then should two, we just pry it down? And, I mean, you're going to have a lot of bolts you got to take out. If you can get to those, get to them. But I agree. I mean, it is, it would be, it is tucked up in there, isn't it? I mean, I can pull it down and just freaking here I, I think if we pull these down that'll hang better so let's just pull these off and then so the conclusion that we're going to go to is we're going to pull this one this one and this one to try to get this thing just to hang down to give some level of room in here because i don't really know how you guys do this without letting this hang down more because it's pretty freaking tight in there and i feel like i'm going to break this by bending it down okay Sorry, man. My other, my other tools are coming over soon. There's only three of them like this, so. Okay. No big deal. All right. So. Yeah. See, there you go. Okay. I think that's what they say in the instructions. Just pop that down, because then you can reach in there easily. I mean, still tight, but a lot easier. Okay. Did you take the 11 mil bolts out that are holding the bracket in place? Or are you working on those? I'm, I'm taking that bracket off right now. Okay. So that's what I got off is one of those. Okay. I'm going to do the other side. Okay. Once you get all four of those off, it says allow the sway bar to rest in the under tray while performing the following step. So you just leave it chill in there and we go to the next step. This might work. I just wedge this one in here. That actually might work better. So I think, I think we're good, Alex. What's that? I think we're good. I think this will work. Yeah, that plastic piece really does get in the way, doesn't it? The ones that are on the, the farthest back are hard to get to, aren't they? That's right yeah, once you figure out the angle, yeah. like this weird angle that I'm at right now seems to work, and now it's able to hand loosen. But definitely the old right tool for the job saying. <laughs> Look for one. 15 mil bolt on the rod end. All right. Okay. So, so do you have a 15? Uh, oh, yeah, open ratcheting. And then possibly an Allen to hold it. 
if it spins past that one. Okay, so that's off. Pain in the butt to work around this thing, but we opted to not pull it off. Now we gotta pull this dude off and that's literally all there is to it. We'll compare sizes. Awesome, thank you. Um, is that Alan turning or no? Um, It's turning. Is it turning? Yep. Does it say what Allen size it is? It doesn't say anything about the Allen. Okay. So Unplug Performance thinks this Allen is not going to turn, but to let you know, it does. Yeah, that is a... Is it labeled? Is it microscopic? It's this one. It's that one right there. Five mil? All right, well, while Todd is pulling the OEM sway bar off the car, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna prepare these bushings with the grease packet that Unplug Performance provided. And we're gonna go ahead and get that prepped so he can get that on the car. And uh, let's get that going. Set you up over here. My handy dandy instructions out here. Begin by adding half of the provided grease packet to the inside of each bushing. Apply only the inside of the bushing, not to the outside, and slide the bushing onto the sway bars till they reach the bushing perth on the bar. There's your bushing perth. Only the inside, not the outside. Obviously here, pro tip guys, when you're gonna slide this on, right, Put the grease on the inside of the side that you're going to slide it over um, first. It's, I mean, it's split, right? So just kind of stick it on there. So side note, while Alex is doing that, I got the stock sway bar off. And once Alex gets all the grease on there, we'll put them side by side so you can see. But definitely, yeah, we should, we should measure the diameter here. Do you have mics? At my house. You're gonna hate me. That's one greased. Let's grease this other one. What does it say? Do you use half on each one? Yeah, I use half on each one, so I just kinda. Just kinda going around there. Okay, got those all greased up. Um, can you toss me one of those rags? For sure. And then spray my hands with that alcohol. And those, those little bushings have a slice in them, right? Yes. Cool. I just need to look and see if they go on the outside or the inside. Of they go on the out outside. They go on the outside? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, then. just from looking at where these are at, they're definitely that wide. just make sure that they're worked in if you want your you always want your sway bars to be able to freely move if you have a bound sway bar it's going to bind bind your suspension really badly and it's going to squeak and stuff right which way to slice this side uh yeah slice that up yeah i don't think it i don't think you can put it backwards okay cool because it would be all right, let's 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 do a side-by-side -side comparison. Production action here. For the thumbnail. Okay. 
All right, since we are very under-tooled at this facility, Alex at home has every tool under the sun, and at my house, I have every tool as well. I used to build motors and do lots of stuff with cars, so it's frustrating we don't have the right tool, but we're using a string to measure the outer circumference because we're just curious as far as comparative purposes to see what this thing is. I mean, I know that they probably list what it is, and I could just look it up if it says it on the instructions. Okay, so from my finger to the end of the start of that metal there. We're gonna do this in inches, because we're lame. Three and a half. Three and a half inch, okay. Yeah. Versus. Stock looks to be. Three. Three and an eighth, maybe? Yeah, maybe just over three. So we've got three and an eighth. Three and an eighth to three and a half. And then as far as which one of these to put it on, do you want to look that yep. up and I'll start putting these brackets on? Okay. Because it, it, it says there's one way to do it for like the stiffest setting and then the loosest, and we want to do it for the stiffest okay. setting. Okay. So that'll be the plan. Okay, once complete, raise the bar to the under tray in order to install the new bracket. So you're gonna put those back, those back brackets in. So these are gonna get installed first. Part with the greased bushings will go on first. Did you ever turn your channel back on? Oh, yeah. Okay. So again, on this side. Okay, so that right there, that's, that's considered top. So basically there's three holes like this. This one is the top. The one that's, yeah, so the one that's the closest to the control arm. Yep, okay, is and your, then- Is your stiffest setting. And then does it say the other one's closest to the back of the vehicle? The one that's the closest to the ground is the softest setting. So- Closest to the ground. Yep. The one furthest from the control arm is the softest. The one closest is the soft, is the stiffest. Okay. And the middle is. And then I, I don't need a washer on here, right? You do not. Okay. All right. So we got that. It'll be a 15 millimeter end link nut, and it's going to be torqued to 40 foot pounds. So I'm going to get my torque wrench set up for you. Okay. It's going to be tough to torque without this Allen. You know the Allen's holding it. Yeah. Once you have all the appropriate spacing and you make sure the bar can be slid right, forward and that? backwards. And Is that set at 40? It's set at 40 and it's set to tight. Cool. On the one. All right, 40, good. Okay. It's probably a little more than 40, but because it went pretty easy. All right, and then the one's at 20? Uh, 22 foot pounds on the other one. So. And those are what, 11 mils? So I don't know. Yeah, 11 mil. I have an 11 mil socket here. I just want to snug it up first. And then does it say to like push the bracket forward or back? Because yeah, you should be able to slide the. <clears throat> I mean, does it say to push it towards the rear of the car? I thought I read that in the instructions that once you have that on there, push the bracket fully to the back of the car. I mean, what? 
it says once the brackets have been lightly torqued, which you, you did, for the new sway bar to hang freely, you'll then rotate the sway bar towards the inside of the rear under tray so you can place your end link in the desired position. The firmest setting will be at the top closest to the control arm, while the softest setting will be at the bottom closest to the floor. Tighten the end link to 50 to 40 foot pounds. Before tightening the new bracket to spec, ensure there's clearance with the orange power cables as shown above. You got clearance with those orange power cables? That's where we're pushing that bracket back. Yep. Gotcha. The bar okay. can be slid forwards or backwards to ensure adequate spacing. How are we looking on those orange cables? Yeah, there's just, it's, it, it makes sense that you, you want to push the bracket all the way back towards the butt of the vehicle. Yeah. Because if not, then it just pulls that sway bar closer to the orange mm -hmm. cables. Yep. And once you get it as far as you want away from that orange cable, then you torque it down to 22 foot pounds with this guy right in the eye. It's critical to do not go over the torque specs with these bolts that go into the threaded subframe. If you strip your subframe, you will be very sad. It doesn't say that in the instructions, it's it, just what you're telling me? You, right? No, in the instructions, there is a giant, big, asterisk thing in bold letters that says it is critical to not go over the torque specs of these bolts that go into the threaded subframe. Oh, it says you'll be sad? I add the you'll be sad part, because oh. you will be sad. If you have to have a... Um, thread repair to your chassis of your brand new plaid. I don't think that'd make you too happy. Yeah, put in a time cert. Yeah, yeah, one of those, uh, what is it, Healy coils? Or a time cert's better than a Healy coil. What is it, a time cert? Time cert, yeah. It's like, so a Healy coil is just a little piece of wire that's yeah. rolled around. Yeah. A, a time cert's an entire sleeve. Oh, so basically you're just replacing the whole, so you drill it out and then what, knock that sleeve in? Yep. Do you do it with heat, like uh, like heat? You expand and use cryo. No, you just no. Uh, you, you you have to tap a bigger hole. Right. But uh, I used to put time certs in aluminum blocks on VQ thirty five DEs on three fifty Zs when we would put half inch head studs in. Gotcha. And those things are strong. So basically, what do you do? You tap for a larger a larger thread, and that 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 cert threads into what you thread in there and then there's threads in that thing? Yeah. Okay, that makes sense. All right, now the hard part is just with this wacky wrench. Without an extension. Okay. Might work. Oh yeah, it'll work without. You got it? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Port number one. Yeah, the rear one is not gonna be as friendly because of the angle. I'm gonna need a little bit of a, a length on this or I won't be able to do it. Okay, let's see if I can find it. Cool. All right, everything's torqued down. The distance we're supposed to watch out for, that's the distance we're supposed to watch out for is between the orange cables and the sway bar. Okay. And that's with this pushed all the way back. So now we're going to put this little bastard back. Something I could be wrong. Mm, but. No, I think it, yeah, you got it. Okay.
you have to show for it. All you get to show off is that little blue piece of the end of the sway bar sticking out on both sides. That's it. Besides that, besides that, hopefully you can feel the performance upgrade, but we'll see. I don't know. You think it's something I can actually be able to tell? I think it's something that you're definitely going to be able to tell. You think so? Yeah. Okay. Just take a turn at 100 miles an hour and... Two things. You got a smudge on that camera lens, you got shit on your shirt. Okay, shit on my shirt is acceptable. Yes, maybe. If you've been laying on the floor. The smudge. As Greta Thunberg would say, how dare you? All right, it's two o'clock now. We started at about 12, so it took two hours, but at least 45 minutes of that was trying to find the right tools. Right, and I would say 12, when we say 12, I mean like I was rolling that door up at 12 o'clock and That's you were right. pulling in here. That's right, so maybe 12, 15. So it took us about an hour 45. We were scrambling for tools, using some of the wrong tools because like we said earlier, Alex has a bunch of tools at home. I got a bunch of tools at home and this is a shop that Alex doesn't necessarily build cars in. This is just one that so it is a shop that we build cars in. However, it's a shop that we're getting set up to build cars in. I just got all that stuff from Harbor Freight like last week with all the saws and everything to be able to build the roll cages and get fab work set up. I have a big tool chest and other stuff that's coming over here. The lifts are going in. We just got the 36 foot gooseneck trailer out there. Yeah, yeah. The team's being set up and being built. It's growing, but. And so, and yeah. so side note, because you just threw something out there where you could ask for a lot of YouTube hatred and, and comments on your Harbor Freight thing. Yeah. Certain things can be bought at Harbor Freight quite well, and it's pretty much the same product, it's just cheaper. Other things like really nice ratchet sets and stuff, yeah. probably not. Yeah, like all the tools that we work with over here are either Craftsman or Snap-on, like the ones that I have in my actual tool chest box. So now, other- This is what they're building. This uh, is a VQ35 yeah. DE, this is a, a G35, right? It's a G35, it's an 05 G35, and we're getting ready to put the cage in it, so it's like prepped for the cage. But stuff like this, Harbor Freight, great. Stuff like that, Harbor Freight, great. Stuff like this, not Harbor Freight. This is a Lincoln welder. This is what we're using to put the cage in. Quality when it comes to stuff like that. Although, some of the welders from Harbor Freight got pretty good reviews. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so. well, there you go. So we're gonna go take this for a test drive. We're gonna see if we can feel a difference. And that's it, uh, start to finish, I'd say safely. If you have the right tools, a hair over an hour if you wanna just be safe. And that's even like jacking the car up and putting it down yep. and cleaning up. Okay, so he's gonna run on down the road here. And he's gonna do a couple of weaves, simulated chicanes. See how stable she looks.